there, there are several that we we're really proud of. There's one particular mollusk, a shellfish that's even been named for the Atlas project. It's called Mayanara atlasiana. So we're really proud of that. Um, but I think one of my favorite has to be a zoanthid, which is a relative of the corals and sea anemones. And it lives on the skeletons of black corals in the archipelago of the Azores, right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It's an absolutely beautiful little animal. Oh, that's amazing. And just tell me a little bit, because also these species, they live obviously very deep down, but they've helped you kind of put a, a very important piece in the puzzle about how oceans work. So, so what was the function of many of these species that had been undetected until now? So these species are often associated with deep water corals and also with sponge grounds. And these are really critical habitats in the deep ocean. They're the cities of the deep sea, effectively. They're places that lots of other animals live. And just like human cities, they're places that need to recycle their nutrients, they need to look, recycle their wastes, and they need to look after all the inhabitants. And in Atlas, we've actually discovered a lot about how those processes happen. The relationships are really intricate and very special. And it's just highlighting to us how important those places are in the whole Atlantic. And as you said in your introduction, as we see the oceans becoming warmer, more acidic, and in some places losing the oxygen vital to life, these places are at the forefront of those changes and it doesn't look a very good future. We've modeled the implications and the suitability of the habitat that the corals live in, for instance, is declining really rapidly. So it's vital we limit carbon dioxide emissions, uh, not just to preserve our own habitat, but to preserve the habitat of these very vulnerable deep sea ecosystems too. And so, therefore, do you think if carbon dioxide is limited, will damage that has been done, uh, I mean, can that damage that has been done be reversed? I think one of the critical things to be aware of is that the genie is out of the bottle now. That carbon dioxide is in the Earth system. It's going to work its way through the Earth system. So what we need to do in society is think really carefully about the other pressures we apply onto ecosystems. So it's all about sustainable management moving forward. And that was a big part of the Atlas project over the last five years, taking the scientific discoveries that we made right into policy discussions so that we can inform the best spatial management, the best marine protected area networks to make sure that human activities only take place in a sustainable manner in the future. And I guess what's incredible is that we know so little about the deep ocean floor. So uh, as this project kind of draws to a close or enters a new chapter, if you had unlimited funding and resources, what would you be in your next uh, exploration project? That's a tough question. I think in, what we've learned in Atlas is the power of teaming up. So in Atlas, we teamed up across Canada, the United States and the European Union. And the funding came from the European Union to allow us to do that. We have a new project just launched. It's called I Atlantic. In that project, we're teaming up with Brazilians, Argentinians, and South Africans. And actually, I think what I'd do with the unlimited resources you've kindly given me is invest it all in the people. And that's where most of the funds go. That's where most of our, our, our efforts go, to create the next generation of people empowered to go and study the deep ocean uh, and look after it for future generations.